This evening, I would like to present a very interesting occurrence, which we find evidence of in several articles uh, from the French press dating from uh, the early part of January uh, 1884. Now, this occurrence uh, was a break-in, a burglary, at the Montaigne Frères Rambouillet Spring Factory. Now, this appears to have occurred around uh, the first decade of, of January, 1884, and this happened after midnight. Now, I would like to read an article which uh, illustrates this entire episode uh, very um, succinctly, and I find it very interesting that we have such detail concerning this break-in. So, the this is from an article uh, originally in uh, published on uh, Saturday, the twelfth of January, eighteen eighty four, and this was in L'Industriel de Saint Germain en Laye. This is also in uh, other uh, newspapers, uh, for example, La Baie de Saint Eloise, and there are other reporters that reported on this. However, let us let us proceed. Uh, Rambouillet, our colleague from uh, L'Annonciateur, uh, uh, this is another newspaper, uh, from Rambouillet, brings us the account of a very dramatic uh, theft that has just taken place in this town. During the night, from um, Monday to Tuesday, around uh, half past midnight, uh, Mr. Montandon, who lives in the Reynal house, on Pierrefit Street, uh, noticed a light in his significant factory, uh, located opposite his residence. His surprise was great, and so was his courage, as will be seen later. Natural, naturally, thinking uh, that these were wrongdoers working their best, he armed himself with his revolver and entered the factory through a back door that he uh, that he could open without being heard. Uh, what does he see? Two individuals who, at that moment, are approaching his office to enter there. They had to remove the lock from the door of a vestibule separating the office from the factory. Immediately, Mr. Montandon aims his gun at these wretches and says, surrender or I'll shoot you. Instead of complying with this demand, uh, they turn off the light, uh, hoping to escape in the darkness. Uh, then Monsieur Montandon fires a shot from his revolver uh, to intimidate them. Uh, but after the shot, complete silence. Uh, immediately, or rather, uh, Monsieur Montandon remains on the lookout. After a few moments, he hears a slight noise. Uh, his, he heads towards where he, this, this noise seems to come from. Uh, and groping, he lays his hands on one of the wrongdoers and exclaims, If the other doesn't surrender, I'll kill this one I'm holding. Uh, this is quite dramatic. Um, the latter, terrified of the situation, immediately says, Oh, Pierre, surrender. Uh, but Pierre, uh, little moved by the plea uh, of, of his worthy <laughs> apprehended comrade, uh, is only concerned uh, with one thing, and that's making a getaway uh, without being recognized. And he succeeds. Now, uh, Mr. Montendon, whose energy has not wavered for a second, uh, then took his prisoner to the gendarmerie, uh, who stated his name as Léon Alexandre Gier, aged 20, a cook, and native of Tours. Uh, he had passed through Rambouillet on the 4th of July uh, last, and according to his passport, he was a locksmith. Uh, he was searched, and a six-shot revolver was found on him of which four were, load, were loaded, uh, two knives, a diamond, etc. He did not want to provo uh, provide information about the famous Pierre. 
he only uh, said that he had traveled with him from Paris to Rambouillet, and that he only knew him by the name he had mentioned. Based on uh, information given to the police, it is believed that his name is Pierre Marin, aged 18 and born in Ruffec. Uh, Monsieur Montendon, upon re returning to his factory, uh, which he visited from one end to the other, found the drawers of the desks of his two accountants had been forcibly opened uh, and postage stamps and 50 cents were taken. Or this would be some themes. Uh, the thieves' uh, noses must have grown considerably in the face of such meager findings. Uh, it was also noted that the latter had passed through breaches made in the trellis surrounding the small park behind the factory, where they entered through a window from which an entire uh, pane had been removed using a diamond. So this uh, article has an extremely large amount of information. Now, first of all, we must uh, con consider who this individual is. Now, the uh, father uh, who had passed this business on during the 1880s to his son, the father would have been around 80 years old in 1884, 79, 80. This is probably not Henri or Abraham Henri. Uh, uh, this is probably his son, uh, Alfred Montenden. And Alfred, uh, right around this time, uh, well, several years ac actually beyond this, uh, in 1887, would eventually relocate back to Paris. Now, around this time, his father was probably already in Paris, and his father would die uh, also in 1887 by end, end of the year. So this is most likely to have been uh, able to have uh, confronted these thieves. It's, this must, we must be speaking of the son, uh, Alfred Montendon. And we do have a lot of uh, information about Alfred with regards to the uh, now he, he was uh, the last owner of this in enterprise. This enterprise had been located here from the 1840s after relocating from Paris. Now this was eventually uh, uh, totally uh, uh, fitted out with uh, steam equipment uh, and their production exploded. So uh, by this time, it was already uh, the, in the highly advanced stage in the 1880s where they were, uh, this was the largest watch and clock spring producer uh, in Europe and the world. And they also had the highest quality springs. Uh, now, uh, Alfred also had uh, many uh, um, gauges. And then these were for calibrating uh, and sizing uh, watch springs and clock springs. And we find these uh, signed uh, Alfred Montendon, uh, Montenefers, Rambouillet, uh, oftentimes uh, saint Eroise, S-N-O, uh, we can see on the gauge. However, this is uh, during his tenureship of the, of the business. Uh, he would eventually uh, relocate to Paris uh, and uh, a lot of the technology was sort of outsourced to other companies. Uh, he would eventually die in 1918, uh, and this was the end of the of the entire business. He had been uh, receiving in incomes towards the last four years through uh, representatives who sold his technology. But this is very interesting. And now uh, I should mention that originally when they moved to uh, Rambouillet from Paris, they moved to Rue du Hasard number eight, and then uh, they uh, acquired even more land. And this what would have been the location here. Here in the article it's mentioned on Rue de la Pierrefitte. Now, uh, this was, uh, the Pierrefitte was the industrial section of, uh, also the section of town was also called Pierrefitte. But this is this industrial section of Rambouillet. And this would eventually be sold uh, around uh, 1905, I believe. Uh, to um, another individual who um, uh, started an entirely different business. Uh, so, uh, but by 1905, we have uh, Montana for his watch, watch and clock springs factory has already um, uh, basically 
liquidated, the technology was still their uh, proprietorship and they were still realizing sales in this, in this line. However, um, but this is very interesting. This tells us that uh, there was a residence across the street in this Raynal uh, house. Uh, and um, uh, we have so much uh, uh, the bravery uh, that he, uh, this, uh, Alfred, uh, took on these thieves. It's very fascinating. And that the thieves were, in fact, armed with a gun, a revolver, and two knives. And they apparently they used the diamond to... Uh, uh, Cut a hole in the window pane, uh, enabling themselves to um, get through uh, that layer of security. Of course, they it did bend the trellis to get into the property itself, but then cut the window. But this is also very interesting in that when we look at these thieves who are mentioned here, we do find these the, the names. Now, very interestingly, very interestingly, uh, this main individual, the older one, who was enlisted as a cook. Uh, we do have him. Uh, now, it says in his passport that he was a locksmith, but uh, from the uh, prison registration of the city of Tours, we have records from between 1830 and 1914. And prison de Tours, this is the prison of Tours, uh, Andre et Loire, France. Uh, index number 388, we find Agir Alexandre Lyon, aged 21. Now, this is exactly the date, 1884. Uh, this is his arrest record. Uh, he was put into prison. Uh, now, uh, Al Alfred Montandon took him to the gendarmerie and he was then put straight into prison. Uh, but we do, uh, he was born, we do see from the genealogical information we have on this year, that he was born in 1863, and in 1884, he would have been 21. So uh, we do find other information regarding to him. Now this, he, his father was Francois Alexandre, and his mother was a La Broye, Rose Melina. Now, um, his occupation uh, listing in the, in the, uh, prison uh, records are as cuisinier, which is a cook. Uh, so, and his father was uh, François Alexandre. Now, he was a mechanicien, a chemin de fer de d'Orléans. So he was working on the railroads. And the same year, uh, it's not exactly clear how long he spent in uh, prison, this uh, uh, um, year. However, uh, he did marry in 1893, and uh, his father died the same year. Uh, then later we find that in 1908, his first daughter was born and he himself died in 1915, uh, which is three years previous, uh, previous to uh, Monsieur Montendon, uh, Alfred. Uh, he died in Paris in, uh, in the seventh arrondissement of Paris this, this year. So uh, not exactly clear uh, did he ever go back to his bur burglaring? However, it's very interesting that we have found this information, this genealogical information, and we have placed him with prisoner, prison records uh, to his arrest in 1884 at the age of 21, which is exactly what our article relates. So this is a very um, exciting uh, sort of uh, anecdote uh, about this uh, uh, world famous and uh, celebrity uh, watch and clock spring maker how uh, the uh, these thieves entered uh, after midnight uh, they were observed by the owner who uh, boldly went over and confronted them it was a shot in the dark and uh, he apprehended one and originally or eventually both were uh, just found out and it, it it would appear that this Pierre Marin was also uh, detained as the, his identity was known. Uh, this is not exactly clear, but this has just been a short little uh, uh, story time about this interlude of this burglary at Montanifer's Rambouillet in 1884, a shot in the dark, and uh, the burglary was foiled uh, by uh, this intrepid uh, 
uh, Alfred Montendon. But I hope you enjoyed this uh, regaling of this uh, <laughs> uh, long forgotten uh, sort of situation. And I, I, I thank you for your um, attention, your support, and I wish you a good evening. Bye-bye.